Welcome to the B.F. Anderson uh, update, technical update for March the 28th. I'm doing the uh, report a little early this week due to the excessive volatility in the market. Just wanted to talk about it. You know, Warren Buffett said he had two rules. Rule number one was don't lose the money. And rule number two was never forget rule number one. So there comes a time where you have to use defensive strategies in order to protect your portfolio. So we're naive if we don't. It's a, you know There are difficult markets out there, and we're having one now. So let's kind of just take a look at where we are. We're going to look at several indexes and, then, and also look at a watch list. Now, I, I will say this is a really important time to be thinking about adding to your portfolio if you've been thinking about that because you know you want to not necessarily do any buying right now you you but you do want to be in a position to buy once things start to get straightened out now if we look at the last 12 months you can see that the market is pretty much and this is the nasdaq this is the nasdaq composite it's been pretty steady i mean this is a daily graph and these are day by day stuff i mean the volatility has been very 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 low and so we get into you know the uh into january and and then all of a sudden the vo volatility goes insane so we've gone from hardly any volatility to insane volatility so what does this mean it means the market is uncertain there's an uncertainty out there that it is concerned about now we don't know what it is and we think we do but we don't I was on the radio yesterday on the Jim Inkster show, and I'm, everybody wanted to say it was because of the tariffs, or they wanted to say it was because of the Stormy Daniels fiasco, or something to do with Facebook. Look, we really don't know what it is. It could be anything. It could be a black swan event. We just don't know. It's just that the market has reached to a, a point here where uncertainty is keeping the sellers in here the sellers are definitely in here so you want to like i say take incremental defensive steps don't panic don't rush out and sell everything just take it step at a time so like the first step would be just stop buying that'd be the first step second step would be to understand the importance of a stop loss you see one of the beautiful things about the stock market is you have liquidity so if you decide that you want to sleep better at night and you want to lighten up, lighten up, you know, but use a discipline here. Don't just randomly have a stop loss. You know, we have tightened our stop losses, actually. So we are in a very defensive mode here. So you can see the volatility here in the NASDAQ. Now, here we go. This is the Dow Jones. Again, just look how volatile we have things here. This is just not, this is not an uptrend. Okay, but long term, and I'll get into the long term graphs, everything looks pretty good. But on a short term basis here, we've hit, you know, some difficulties. Here's the mid cap stocks. Again, same basic pattern. You're not seeing really any big variances here except a big drop here. Now, if y'all remember, we did say that we thought this could be a V bottom, and I did say that V bottoms are incredibly rare. So it is looking more like a W bottom. So here's your left side of the W. Here's your middle of the W. Here's your right side of the W. Now, you know, several things can happen here. Um, in fact, let's go to another graph that would be even better. Now, this is the New York composite similar. So what could happen here is you break to a new low. That's just not out of the question at all. Um, and then that's usually a W bottom because usually what happens is you get a shakeout, which Nicholas Darvis in his book referred to it like a dancer crouching, the crouch before the leap. Okay, so we could get a crouch and a leap. We could get that. We could just turn around and go right back up here. Uh, we could go up and consolidate for an extended period of time. We, you know, the, the most difficult thing about a sideways market is you get these big drops sideways, big drops sideways. This is kind of what happened back in 14 through 16 up until the election. Then we went into the uptrend. So here we go. Let's keep going here. Here's the small cap stocks. And actually, this is very encouraging because the small caps are actually holding up the best. So, you know, does that mean that maybe the economy's okay? Could also mean that the tariffs are having an impact because small companies don't usually have to deal with those issues. Okay, here we have the S&P large cap, same basic plan. Now you can see here, I've, I've put on here the 200-day moving average. So we basically pulled down to the 200-day moving average, rallied, middle part of the W. We got the right part of the W here. 
question is, are we going to break the 200-day, then rally? Are we going to rally from here? Are we going to consolidate? We just don't know. So the best thing to do is just sit tight, wait. Now here's the S&P large cap index where we're using a monthly chart. So we get more of a long-term picture here. I take this all the way back to 09, and you can see if we draw that simple trend line, which is just connecting the lows, we get a, you know, we're still above the trend line. So we're still in a long-term uptrend. And in fact, if you look at where we are right now, which is 2612, we're still above the upper moving average, which is the 10-month moving average. We're not getting any crosses. Everything looks good here. So this is why I'm saying this might be a good time to be putting some money in your portfolio because we're still looking good on the long term. Now on the breakout that we're always talking about, we're using the value line geometric index. Remember this is an equally weighted index, probably the best index out there. No one looks at it, but I think it's one of the best ones. So here we go, hit the top, bear market, hit the top, bear market, hit the top, mini bear market. Now we have broken out this looks like a new bull market similar to 1995, and we are holding above the breakout. So actually, that looks pretty good. So long term, things are fine. Now the top five, now remember here, the top five is a watch list. This is not a buy list. So we just want to kind of see which stocks in our database are acting the best. Well, here's Micron Tech, which is semiconductors, but you can see yesterday down 5.7%. You know, kind of, kind of rough, kind of rough. This is MuleSoft, which is being bought out by Salesforce.com, so it's a buyout. Probably shouldn't even have it on the list, but I kept it on there anyway because it is acting right. Netflix continues to, you know, act okay. Um, you know, it dropped six percent yesterday. You know, it pulled back to around 300, holding the moving average. The stock's fine. There's, there's really not a problem here, but I, I still think just kind of watch it. Just watch right now. Here's Nutanix, which is another tech stock, dropped almost 9% yesterday. You can see the drop here. Again, this is just dicey stuff. I mean, it's just a little too difficult for me. Red Hat um, came out with real good earnings yesterday. Uh, excellent report. The, again, this is that software group. This is where you're seeing all these software companies. What they're doing is they're converting to the cloud technology, and, it, and their profit margins are going up because it's cheaper, and they still make the same profit. So, in, in fact, they even have a better deal because they have a subscription arrangement with their clientele. So, what I'm saying here is this. Take it a step at a time, be defensive, don't be naive. This thing can still you know, have a rough time. However, the long-term trend is still up, so stick with stocks. Don't give up on them. Just be aware of the fact that in the near term, we're going to have some difficulties and some volatility. Call me if you have any questions. Thank you.